Welcome back to Canine Corner, where we are helping to make rescue the best breed of dog. Next up for rehab is the spunky girl, Hartley. Let's check out her story. Look at that face. Hartley's journey for adoption began over a year ago. She was alone and pregnant when she wandered up to a police yard. The police had no choice but to report her to animal control. The next call went to Stacy Stewart. It was a desperate plea to find this girl a foster home so she wouldn't end up in the shelter. I absolutely, without a second thought, said, yes, I'll take her. The next night, um, I met with the officer and picked her up, and she jumped right in my car. Um, the second I opened the door, she was at my feet, hopped in my car and was ready to go. So we did, we came home, and she walked into our place, and she was definitely very pregnant, and walked up, sniffed my other dogs, went over and laid down and found her spot, and we just kind of became, you know, I don't know, just, family right away. Within the next 48 hours, Hartley had her puppies. She looked to Stacy as a form of comfort, making their bond even stronger. She's just an amazing dog, and that's, you know, so I promised her that I would do everything I could to find her that forever family. In order to fulfill that promise, Stacy has committed to working with experts to moderate some of Hartley's behaviors. Hartley suffers from anxiety when not in the home. This anxiety transitions into fear, which some people can mistake as aggression. This comes in the form of barking and extreme leash pulling. Hartley and Stacy decided to sit down with Miriam, another great pet communicator, to see what they could find. What is your question? Don't give me too much information, just a basic, um, if you have one, first question about Hartley. Um, just with questions, just trying to help her feel comfortable and feel safe. Okay. She seems to... So feel I mean, unsafe. Sorry, she okay. feels unsafe. Yeah, it okay. just seems like sometimes her reaction. She just feels really scared. That's the. Well, that's the. Uh, I'm using her picture because sometimes they don't sit still, and uh, seeing their eyes is more effective for me. But the fear was uh, definitely um, fear, and the 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 need to run. I also feel like she's. A couple things you have to be careful of is um, make sure she's in an area that is very, very secured because she does run. Even though, even though she feels, it's, I can feel that she feels safe with you, but when she's out, um, outside of, of a home environment, she's very nervous and very fearful. Um, and her reaction is to run. Um, that if you uh, gave her the opportunity, that's what she would do. The thing is there isn't aggression. I don't feel aggression with right. the fear. Just fear and anxiety. Right. And I don't have any, like, no, nothing under her, in her existence has been solid and permanent. Even though being in the foster program is neither solid or permanent, Stacy knows she must alter this fear-induced behavior Hartley is experiencing in order for her to have a chance at adoption. So Barkbuster Sue Doyle came over to help. Anytime your dog, uh, you command your dog, she obeys and you praise, that helps you to build up your pack leadership. And that's what our training is based on. And you try to look at, you wanna look at how Hartley perceives the world. In training, Sue helps Hartley hold her sit stay when someone comes to the door, opposed to rushing it in a protective and curious manner. Stay. Very nice. Free! Good girl! Hartley is also being taught to not jump up on people and to keep in her place when told to. These are great Stay. techniques that all dogs should practice and know in order to feel they have a secure spot in the pack. Since she is doing great in her own home, the real test comes when we head out to the park to see improvements she has made with her leash training. This exercise that we're going to do is called attentiveness training. And what we're going to use it for is to use Hartley's desire to be with her mom, um, to get her to walk close by her side, get praise, but get very little correction. Leash training takes place in three parts. Attentiveness training, which is using a long leash to see if she will heal even when given a lot of slack. The casual walk, where your dog can not pass you on the leash or go to the end of the leash in any direction. And lastly, the casual walk with distractions to see how attentive Hartley can be around other things. She seems so much calmer today and we're actually 
out and about where there's a lot more distractions. Today, there are dogs walking by, squirrels, kids, and two ducks flew by and uh, she didn't even look at them. <laughs> so she just seems like she's in a much better place and she's, you know, she's really feels comfortable with her foster home right now. Hartley has made such great progress with her behavior over the past month. Stacy and her husband Jamie work with her for almost an hour every day. From day one, a lot of changes. Um, she seems to be, um, she doesn't pull as much. She seems to be much better on listening. She looks at me um, just to see what I'm gonna respond. Um, she's, she's done a lot of different things. She doesn't respond um, like when we were doing the dog training with the door, she doesn't respond to people knocking anymore. Um, she has, um, lets me go through doorways first. She also um, doesn't react as quickly. She takes a minute and she thinks about what's going on before she reacts, before she would react right away. It is clear that Harley is eager to learn and wants to correct the issues that are standing in the way of her and forever. For most of the pit bulls that I've worked with, over the last four and a half years that have been rescue dogs, their main thing is that they really want to please their owners, but they don't know how, they don't know what they should do. They're from an environment where either they weren't treated well or they weren't, they, their communication wasn't very good. And so if the owners can learn to project, hey, I'm taking care of you, you're part of my pack now in a positive way, and clearly communicate to the dog what it is you want them to do, that then that gives them some fulfillment in life that they didn't have before. I think we forget that, you know, just like with humans, where you've been influences your personality today, but it doesn't mean you can't change it. Just because she didn't come from a stable home doesn't mean she can't be everything that she already is, and then some. Hartley has proven just that. Despite her tough past, she loves people, kids, and acting like she is the mom to all the other dogs in her foster home. The best home would be someone who's going to not hurt her, love her 24 seven, unconditionally, no matter what happens and just correct whatever behaviors um, and never give up on her and always be the strong leader for her. A huge thank you to everyone who was involved in this month's rescue rehab episode. I am so impressed with everyone's willingness to help these canine citizens. Often as a community, we forget that these dogs are our responsibility. And I am blown away by the commitment made by Sue, Shelly, Stacy, Miriam, and Nancy to help the dogs in need. It just really warms my heart, you guys. And that leads us to a very special tip of the month. Barkbusters is offering a 10% discount on a training package if you call in the next two months. Email southbay at barkbusters.com today to set up your session with Sue and get a free 15-minute phone consultation. Make sure you mention Canine Corner to get the deal. Also, if you want to work with one of the amazing pet communicators in this episode, here is how to find them. To contact Nancy, go to petcommunicating.com or to chat with Miriam, head on over to whataboutdaisy.com. I hope that you all take advantage of that discount from Barkbusters. Now, I'm hitting the streets to answer your dog-related questions. All right, I am here with my new friend, JR, and his cute puppy, Minnie. JR, what is your question for me today? Well, Minnie was a rescue dog, and we've had her for four years, and we were wondering, um, how to introduce her uh, to another dog if we were to get a second animal. That is a really good question, JR. Um, I love that you rescue. It's something that I'm really proud of our community for doing a lot of. In terms of bringing another dog into your home, Minnie might have already staken her claim inside your home. So the best thing to do is if you find a dog that you are attached to and want to adopt, I would take Minnie to meet him or her outside of the home in a park or in a place where they can just be dogs and hang out, get to know each other. So Minnie's not threatened by a new dog coming into her environment. And once they're already pals and friends, bring that dog right on into your home and I'm sure him or her and Minnie will have a lovely life. Well, great, thank you very much, appreciate that. Of course, good luck with your hopefully new adoption. Thank you very much. Lisa, what is your question for me today? My question is why in the past week or two weeks has he become so finicky? He refuses to eat any of his regular food. 
Okay, my prediction for that is he is just throwing a little doggy fit. You know, sometimes dogs, they'll be so excited to eat all their food in the morning, and then one day they're like, I am tired of eating this, yeah. and so I'm just gonna be, to put it nicely, a little brat, yeah. and not eat it. What I would recommend is taking some white whole meat chicken breast and putting it in his food just so he gets the meal and gets the nutrition. There's absolutely nothing wrong with feeding your dog chicken breast. I wouldn't do it all the time just because it should be reserved as a, a treat or a way to get him to eat, but I would suggest putting some chicken in his food bowl just to get him excited about meal time again. Okay, everyone, I'm here with Kate now and her cute dog, Lucky. Kate, hit me with your question. Uh, Lucky is a shelter dog we've had for eight months and he hates large dogs. There is no history that we got from the shelter, so we can only assume that maybe he was attacked, threatened, but, you know, just like some tips on maybe how to teach him that, you know, not every large dog wants to hurt him or, you know, be a threat to him. I can relate because my dog does the same thing, and I don't know why, he's also a rescue, um, so I'm not sure the reasoning behind it, but what you can do, have him on a super tight leash and keep him close to you when you're walking him. Try to make him feel safe and close to me and always have the large dog become submissive. If the large dog will sit or better yet even lay down or just stop moving, my dog all of a sudden feels more relaxed and honestly he just wants to smell <laughs> his butt. And once he can smell his butt and the big dog is submissive and they see that he's not going to be harmed, then it will become a more friendly encounter. But if a big dog's coming, you just need to warn that person with their dog and Lucky, you know, we're gonna have to take this slow. Not every dog understands that meetings take time. Some people think, oh, you have a dog, I have a dog, we're instantly friends. That's not how it's gonna work. Some time that needs to be spent in order to make all dogs friends. If you want me to answer your dog-related questions, just ask me. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash caninecornertv, and I will respond to your important questions right away. Now, for this month's Dog Adoption Recap, I'm going to update you on where Daredevil and Hartley are today. Since working with Daredevil, his confidence has increased significantly. He is holding his head up higher when he walks and seems less timid around the house. He is getting along well with the other dogs he has fostered with and is acting more trusting towards humans than ever before. With time and patience, Daredevil will soon be able to live life like every other happy dog out there. Hartley has shown noteworthy improvements as well. She is still very happy being a 65 pound lap dog. Since meeting with Miriam and Sue, Hartley has been better walking on her leash and not being so protective of her foster home. She was even found in her crate the other day. Hartley's caretakers continue to put training her as a top priority. To adopt or get more information on Daredevil or Hartley, please contact Noah's Bark Rescue. Visit noahs-bark.org or email noahsbarkdogs at yahoo.com. And let's not forget this month's favorite viewer photo. This episode, the cutest pick of the month is Mochi. Mochi is seen here with her extremely happy and proud new dad. Mochi was adopted through our friends at Pug Nation Rescue of LA. If you want to see your pup on Canine Corner, send me their picture. Find and like us at facebook.com slash caninecornertv. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer right away. Call 310-618-5762 or email caninecorner at torrentca.gov. All right, my fellow dog lovers, that is all the time we have on our show today. Thank you so much for tuning into Canine Corner the show that guarantees to keep your dog's tail wagging. I am your host, Megan Vedic, and we'll see you next time.